we now do one of the most important sections of vectors. We are often going to have data coming to us in polar form and all our equations for solving physics needs to generally be converted in some sort of coordinate system like Cartesian form. So for instance let's assume for a minute here that we have the following type of problem that somebody has given us say a cannonball and that cannonball is going to be shot oh, let's see if I can get my thing here it's going to be shot right here at some sort of speed v naught say 30 meters per second and at some angle maybe it's 20 degrees it turns out that we don't have equations or things in our arsenal to handle this vector in polar form. We're going to need to find its x components and y components in order to be able to work problems. This is often called at West Point what's known as BVIC, which stands for Break Vectors into components. So the first part of a problem is, is to draw a picture and break this vector which was written in polar form in terms of how much of that vector is along here and how much of that vector is going in the y direction. In other words we want a vector that looks like this in component form but we've been given the vector in polar form. So we've got to break the vector into components. Now the way to do that, as I've written down in your notes, is the following method of attack. Draw a vector sketch. Whether you're a professional physicist and you're doing this in your head because you've done tens or hundreds of thousands of these, or you're a student who needs to practice it, everybody visualizes the vector sketch. Some just don't write it down on paper. Until you get your graduate degree, you need to practice by writing it down. For one thing, your teacher can't grade what they can't see on your paper. So that's a way of losing points. Second of all, you'll make more mistakes until you learn to be able to visualize really well. Another thing, from the vector sketch, once we have that, we're going to draw a triangle. So let me, let me draw for our problem. Let me go, let's say that we have a vector here like this. And this vector happens to be 20 meters per second, and it happens to be at an angle of 35 degrees. This is x, this is y. This is the vector I've been given. Now, what I need to do is I need to find in the sketch a triangle that I can work. Now, there's a couple of different triangles I could try. I could try this triangle, come over here come down like this and come down like this and that would give me a triangle but although I would have the hypotenuse I wouldn't have one of the angles another and potentially easier thing to do is to take this one right here then I have the hypotenuse and an angle so I'll draw that over here to the side I have 35 degrees and I have 20 meters per second and that's C let's say that I'll call that A I call that B and there's a right triangle so from this vector I have found an associated triangle and my first step in breaking the vector components now is to find the links A and B using trigonometry so let's go ahead and do that. Using trigonometry, A is equal to C, the hypotenuse, times the cosine of my angle. Uh, we'll call that angle theta if you would. Which would be 20 meters per second times the cosine of 35 degrees 
and if I punch that in the calculator come up with that that's 16.4 meters per second all right and the opposite side over here is the hypotenuse times the sine since I'm looking for opposite and s is closer to O than is C for cosine so I have 20 meters per second times the cosine of 35 degrees and I know the cosine of 30 would be a half and that would be 10 so it's going to be more than a half but it's going to be less than this because it's not at 45 yet and if I punch a calculator I get 11.5 meters per second so those are the two sides of the triangle now what do I need to do now well what I need to do now is these are not the components yet the components are not only the sides of the triangle that is the distance okay so good you tell me I've gone in this case 16.4 meters per second and you tell me this is 11.5 meters per second but I also have to count the direction this component is going in the negative x so it's minus the length of the side and this part of the vector is going in the positive y so it's positive because it's going in the positive y direction so my components are found by adding the signs to this so based on what I've written a sub x is minus the side a which would be minus 16.4 meters per second while the y is a positive b because we're moving in the positive y direction that's 11.5 meters per second so my vector is minus 16.4 meters per second i hat plus 11.5 meters per second j hat I would make a rough sketch of that. I want to go about 16.4 over, about 11.5, so I'm looking at a vector that goes kind of like that. Had you lost this sign, you would have tried to draw it over here, and you would see that's not the correct vector. It doesn't match your original drawing. So you'll find your mistakes, and then the teacher won't have to take off points if you actually check your work. Let's try another one this one says convert the following 5 meters at 13.69 degrees alright so I have something that's about 5 meters 36.9 degrees so we're looking at a triangle like this I'm looking for A and B again. A is 5 meters at the cosine of 36.9 degrees. And if I plug all that in, I get 4.00 meters. I wouldn't need to plug this in. I happen to know that this is a very famous triangle. 4 meters, I'm sorry, 5 meters. 5 meters at the sine of 36.9 degrees and you may realize that that's 3 meters so this vector call it A is going to be 4.00 meters I hat I have a distance of 4 and it's in the positive direction so the component is a positive and I'm going up in the positive y so the component here is a positive b and we see of course the reason I knew the answer that's a 3-4-5 triangle that's very famous in trigonometry and such but again draw the vector draw a picture draw an associated triangle as you get better at these you'll draw them probably in your head but remember that you're always finding positive links for the sides and then you're adding the signs here the plus and minus based on the quadrant that the vector arrow lies in.
Let's try one more. This one's got 8 meters at 60 degrees. And I see this time the easiest triangle for me to draw would be this triangle. And I would have 8 meters here. And there would be A. And there might be my B if you would. So A would be 8 meters times the sine because it's opposite of the 60 degree. 60 degrees. And if I put that in, I find that to be 6.93 meters. And B is the adjacent side to this angle. So I use the cosine. And that's cosine of 60 is a half, so that's 4.00 meters. And then I look, I see that the y component is a positive b. Oops, my fault. Is a positive b. And the x component is this component here. That's the length A, but it's going in the negative X direction, so it's minus A. So my vector would be minus 6.93 meters I hat plus 4.00 meters J hat. This is the way to break any polar vector into components. I don't care if it's the angular momentum in quantum mechanics. I don't care if it's the electric field in an advanced DNM class. Any vector can be broken up with this method. And you need to be good at doing it because we do it a lot. Now, if you're having trouble with the sines and cosines of finding the adjacent opposite side, go back and review the trigonometry. You must be able to do trig because we have to deal with vectors in 70% of our problems or more. All right, So it's essential that you master trig. This should become so second nature. You do this at the beginning of physics problem. You don't even think about it. Then you concentrate and start doing physics. When you're done at the end, you're going to have a problem with these two components. Somebody's going to want to know that hypotenuse and the angle. So we're going to have to convert back. That's the topic of our next video.